All of Northeastern Pennsylvania, Eyewitness News at 7 starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Eyewitness News at 7 on WIOU. I'm Nick Toma. Dozens of people have been arrested after an extensive child predator roundup by Pennsylvania State Police. State Police at the Troop P Barracks in Hanover Township announcing the conclusion of what they called Operation Safe Screen, an extensive child predator detail with several law enforcement agencies. That investigation began in April and it went through June of this year and it resulted in 26 criminal arrests and more than 1,800 counts of felony charges. Objectives included undercover online chatting with predators and coordinating an in-person meeting. The operation also focused on people who produced and shared child pornography and 25 websites were taken offline for showing it. These results are alarming and it highlights the needs for parents and guardians to be vigilant. You need to know who your children are talking to online. And among the 26 who are arrested, four are juveniles. We do have a list of the names and charges of those arrested on PAHomepage.com. Several fire departments around Carbon County rushed to put out a fire in Banks Township where two cats died in the flames. McAdoo, Tamaqua, Weatherly, Beaver Meadows, and Freeland Fire Departments all helping to fight this fire at 10 South Chestnut Street just before 3 this afternoon. The call came in as a bathroom fire that then began on the second floor and then spread to the third floor. The fire also spread to the other side of the duplex at 8 South Chestnut Street. And besides the heat that the firefighters fought, there was a serious hoarding situation that made fighting this one difficult. Guys that got here early on uh, did a fantastic job. I, we called in additional manpower just because guys are really getting spent trying to pull some walls and trying to do some overhaul. So uh, rather than put anybody in a dangerous situation, we just called for more manpower. And besides the cats that were lost in that fire, nobody was hurt. The fire chief says he believes four people are displaced. The cause of the fire currently under investigation. An update now to that deadly chocolate plant explosion in Berks County. Today, federal investigators say the blast was caused by natural gas that was leaking from a defective fitting. The explosion at the RM Palmer Company plant when West Reading killed seven people in March. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, the fitting that was made by DuPont had a known tendency to crack. The fitting was installed 41 years ago. The NTSB says it has not determined the cause of the blast, but it does suspect the gas leak. Once again, Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection declared a code orange air quality action day for our region. This is all due, of course, from those Canadian wildfires. Young children, elderly and those with respiratory issues like asthma are especially vulnerable in the effects of air pollution and should limit outdoor activities. And that takes us to the Instapol question today. We're asking now that we're about halfway through summer, how's it holding up for you? Is it a total washout, too much smoke outside, or are you just trying to enjoy the sun when you can? Those are your choices and you have time to vote by getting that QR code on your screen. Go to pahomepage.com or the drop down menu on our app. And those smoky skies were a problem today. How about some rain for tonight? We're going to find out with meteorologist Josh Rodell standing by now. Uh, kind of a lot going on with our weather uh, improvement with some aspects of what we've been dealing with for the last couple of days. We have some rain showers and thunderstorms across parts of northern Pennsylvania. Uh, they are few and far between, but any storm does have the potential to give us heavy rain and some gusty winds. 81 Williamsport, 80 Sealands Grove, 76 Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Mount Pocono, 72 Hazleton, 73. A bit cooler and a bit below average today because of the smoke and the haze. It's just not letting the surface warm up. We should scour some of this out slowly tonight and tomorrow. So that means 60s in the morning with a little bit of fog by lunch. Clouds breaking for some sun. It will be in the 70s tomorrow afternoon. Low 80s an isolated shower, but most of the time will be dry. And Nick tomorrow the humidity not that bad. A little bit better, but it's coming back and so is the rain. We'll see you soon. I right, see you then. Thanks, Josh. Plans to develop a landmark building in Hazleton have hit a roadblock now. 
The Hazleton City Zoning Board rejected plans from a developer who wants to transform that former St. Joseph's Hospital into senior apartments. The I-Team's Andy Mahalschik joins us in studio with the latest developments on that project. Andy? Well, hey, Nick, there are big-time concerns in the Mountain City, my hometown, that the former hospital remain vacant for decades to come if this project falls through again. The former St. Joseph's Hospital on 8th Street in Hazleton served generations of Hazleton area residents. It's been vacant for at least two decades. A developer plans to spend $30 million to transform the old hospital into apartments for seniors and possibly retail stores on the first floor. But the city's zoning board says development plans do not meet the city's code requirements. City council member Jack Monday understands why the plans are turned down for now. They had 191 apartments and they only had 125 parking spaces, which you, it's be a nightmare. That's, that's not enough. So they, they were not up to some of the things for our code and the board, the members of the zoning board did the right thing in denying it until they come up with plans to, to do it right. The zoning board also said the proposed size of the apartments were too small. Hopefully we could work with the developer. We don't want to, you know, we encourage development. We want to see the building develop and it fixed up and, and brought back to life. But uh, you have to, we have to follow codes. City businessman Joe Scarcelli is concerned that the developer will walk away from the project. The most recent hearing said there's not enough parking. But when the hospital was full and operational, parking was never a problem up in that area of the city. I don't see why it would create a parking problem now. Other residents like Alicia Hayden Gamba have fond memories of a building that's been such a big part of the culture of the Hazelton area. Oh my God, I love this place. I um, was a candy striper here when I was 14 and it really brought me, um, it was, you know, surrounded by helping the elderly a lot of times, the sick. Now we reached out to the developer OB Development based in New York for comment. We have not yet heard back. Now I did speak with a man today, Nick, at the former hospital. He's the building manager, keeping an eye on it. He told me the developer plans on appealing the zoning board decision against, not from the developer, from, but from the building manager. All right, let's say this project just ultimately doesn't happen. I mean, what's next? Is tear the building down? Well, good question. I, I, I said it's my hometown. A lot of good things, bad things at the hospital. There have been so many developers over the years, some proposals, some interest. This person bought the building for $700,000 of a massive building about 10, 15 years ago. There's really nothing else on the table. But again, the city officials say we have to do it the right way because of safety and code. They just can't do a carte blanche. They do whatever you want. So it's a tough situation. They want the building developed. Yeah. But they got to do it right. All right, Andy, thanks. It has been nearly a month now since a fire ripped through the Fountain Court Shopping Center of Pocono Township. But today, the U.S. Small Business Administration opened a recovery center to help businesses impacted by the fire. The SBA is now offering economic injury disaster loans to help meet any working capital needs caused by the disaster. Now, that office will be open through August 3rd. More information for you on pahomepage.com. Luzerne County Flood Protection Authority Control Center has a new home now. After renting locations since uh, its start back in 1996, the Protection Authority will now be located on Wyoming Avenue in 44. Council members tell us that the new control center got over $8 million in county ARPA funding, which helped assist improvements and renovations in that building. The center, well, the funds rather, will also be used to further support the center and respond to flooding. Historically, we have major flood events in this area, so anything that we can do to cut down on response time, you know, save property damage, save lives, too, which is very, you know, very important. The center will also rent out a space for the Department of Homeland Security to use in the coming weeks. Well, that state budget is now 18 days late and counting. Schools really are feeling the impact now. The Department of Education says checks for special ed funding due this month will absolutely be delayed to public schools. Money for basic education due next month is in jeopardy without a finished budget. The Department of Education says there is some federal funding due to schools this month. That will be held up as long as the state budget is held up. Incoming high school freshmen spent today giving back to their community. The University of Success Summer Institute is hosted by the University of Scranton. The two-week program allows students to explore all kinds of career paths to see what might spark their interest. It also provides students with mentoring and tutoring in academics and social and cultural opportunities.
It means a lot because my parents came to this country to give me and my brother more opportunity for education. So this is just one big opportunity. Today, the students volunteered out at St. Francis of Assisi Kitchen. While that kitchen is under renovation, the students were busy organizing the clothing, shelter, and stocking up on the food pantry. Still ahead on this edition of Eyewitness News at 7 on WIOU, another day of prayer and devotion as the faithful gathered for a second day of St. Anne's Novena in Scranton. And later on, lighter side of news, some ground crew members didn't have a prayer against the rain and a huge tarp. That story a bit later.